good afternoon and thank you for the invitation to talk today. Um, so where does it hurt seriously understanding pain receptors and the pain response? I am not sure who decided to give this to me, but I think it was Jonah. I should let you know that Jonah and I were co-residents and I'm trying to figure out what I did to him during that time that he was going to give this to me. Uh, these are my disclosures. They are not relevant to this, uh, to this talk. I got to do the seven seconds. Uh, but I will disclose to you, I'm going to do my best impression of my neurobiology teacher from University of Arizona, Dr. Nolte. So here we go. So I have three objectives uh, with this talk. The first is to go over the pain pathway. I just call it the pathway. And we're going to talk about activating the pathway. And then we're going to talk about blocking the pathway. And I'm doing this because I, was, I always learned that if you want somebody to learn something, you need to tell them three times. So we're going to go through this three times and kind of learn a little bit more as we kind of go through. So if you're talking about the pain pathway, there are four phases to the pain pathway. Transduction, which is that initial stimulation of the pain receptors. There's transmission, which is actually the, the movements of the action potential down the, sig the uh, neuron uh, to the central system. And then modulation, and I'm going to focus a lot on modulation today, as modulation is actually inhibitory on the system. And probably the best way to kind of describe this or give an example of it is if you were in a burning building and it was important for you to get out, you might come out finding that you have a major burn on your arm, but you didn't realize it until you were outside because your brain told you that something was more important than the pain signal, and that's done through modulation. And then finally, perception of pain, which is extremely complicated, uh, happening within the cortex, and I'm not going to go into that because I only have 10 minutes. So pain receptors are, no, are known as nociceptors. There are many ways that you can activate them, either mechanically, thermally, or through polymodal approaches. Um, with chemical stimulation, which for our purposes is inflammation. And these are on free nerve endings that then run as primary first order, order neurons to the spine. And there are two major fiber types that run within a nerve. There's the alpha delta fibers, which are the fast fibers. They're myelinated and send a signal at 20 meters per second. And they are responsible for sharp pain. C fibers are the other fibers, these are slow, which isn't that slow because it's still two meters per second, but this is more responsible for dull pain. So next time you go pick out a rose for your loved one and you prick yourself with a thorn, that initial sharp pain is the alpha delta fiber sending the signal back to tell you to get your finger off of the thorn. And then when you look at your finger and you still feel the throbbing, that is the C fiber. So as we then go and travel through this transmission to the spinal cord, you get your first synapse of a primary neuron to the secondary neuron within the dorsal horn. And that enters through the dorsal ganglion, or so the, do I'm sorry, the dorsal root, where then the cell bodies sit in the dorsal ganglion. And I'm going to go a little more into this because the dorsal horn is really where the magic happens. Uh, but then there are two pathways. There's the ascending pathway, which after the synapse in the do uh, uh, dorsal horn, you get contralateral crossover. And then you run up the spinal thalamic tract to then go to the brain. But there is a descending pathway that actually functions to modulate and works also within the dorsal horn. And this is where opioids actually come in. And there's other drugs that come in too. And that's what we're going to focus on a little bit later. So perception, as I kind of talked about, this is far more complex once you get to the midbrain and up to the cerebellum. And this is, again, very complicated beyond 10 minutes. And, and what we're talking about is really trying to inhibit and work on the pathway itself before it gets to the brain. So how is the pathway activated? So at the receptor level, again, it's mechanically or thermally. But for us, again, it's chemical. This is uh, tissue damage leading to inflammation through these mediators that act on the synapse uh, or synapse with the uh, pain receptor to then send the signal uh, that starts the pathway. So as it reaches the dorsal horn, the area where the sort of real magic is is the substantia gelatinosa, which is within the dorsal horn. And what happens in the first order neuron is you get a release of substance P and glutamate, then activate the secondary neuron uh, that then crosses over and goes up to the brain. But importantly, when it comes to modulation, this is where our endogenous opioids come in. Enkephalins, dynorphins, and endorphins act through interneurons on this synapse. So you should ask yourself, well, if we really wanted to get a signal back to the brain as quickly as possible, why wouldn't we just have one first order neuron that goes all the way 
to the brain and just sends the signal as quickly as possible rather than having to stop right here. Well, you have synapses along the way for the purposes of modulation. And this is the loop feedback that tells you, okay, we don't want you to be in pain forever. So you modulate this, you get release of encephalins and then block sub substance P and glutamate uh, release in the presynapse uh, pre um, end. And then also causes hyperpolarization in the secondary neuron to prevent you from sending an action potential, thus decreasing the amount of pain that you perceive. Now, I don't want to give a misperception that this is the only place that you find opioid receptors. There are three major ones that we all know about, mu, delta, kappa, but there's actually multiple other ones, the most popular being the septin and zeta. Um, but what, what is important is that these are endogenous opioids acting at a single area, but when we give opioids, they're acting systemically, so they're impacting multiple uh, opioid receptors. And why I really bring this up is because as pharmacology tries to improve, there is more focus on the receptor and how you can impact the receptor at the ligand level to actually just target pain receptors within the substantia gelatinosa as opposed to getting all these side effects. So that is ultimately in the world of opioids where they would want to go with it rather than what our traditional uh, systemic opioid is. So as a surgeon, how do I go in the operating room from thinking I've got to fix this to then well, this guy's telling me about a pathway, and I also have to think about that. Well, as a surgeon, you have to understand the mechanism of pain reduction along the pathway, and it makes it a little bit easier. So at the place of transmission you're, or a transduction, you're going to get that response from anti-inflammatories, whether it's steroids, whether it's um, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. This is where you can initially impact the pain pathway. Secondarily, using local anesthetics or even regional blocks are gonna impact the action potential through so, uh, sodium channel blockers. Uh, that's gonna uh, prevent the signal either the first order or you can also go at the spinal level uh, through epidurals impacting the second order neuron transmission. Tramadol has dual mechanism of action. It does act on mu opioid receptors, but it also has serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, which acts at the modulation level, but also centrally within the brain. Opioids, as I've kind of talked about already, the desired effect of the opioid from a pain standpoint is within the substantia gelatinosa, impacting the presynaptic and postsynaptic uh, function, either through reducing substance P or glutamate transmission or decreasing hyperpolar or causing hyperpolarization, decreasing the signal through the second order neuron up to the brain. Um, and then ketamine is an MDA antagonist, which does have central effects, but from a modulation standpoint, there is function on the postsynaptic second, uh, secondary neuron uh, in the substantia gelatinosa. And then gabapentinoids, uh, gabapentin, neurontin, Lyrica act on alpha-2 delta subunits of voltage-gated calcium channel receptors at the presynaptic first-order neuron that then decrease the amount of substance P uh, transmission. So that's going to decrease presynaptic neurotransmitters and then thus decrease pain perception. So as a surgeon, I think the biggest take home is understanding these phases of the pain pathway. And if you understand transduction, transmission, modulation, and perception, you can think about, well, what am I going to target? Am I going to do transduction and hit it at the level of where, the, where I'm making an incision and causing tissue damage? Am I going to try and get it, prevent that signal from actually getting sent to the spinal cord? Or am I going to try and prevent or reduce the actual or improve the feedback through modulation? So with that, thank you. And I tried to do my best impression of Dr. Nolte. I hope he didn't proud.